did a short back in 2009 and um, I uploaded to YouTube and kind of the next morning I had like 150 emails from the Hollywood industry, like every studio, every agent, everybody was like really insane. And, um, and 10 days after that, and I was signing a deal in, in LA with uh, Sam Raimi, like a blind deal to make whatever mov movie I wanted. He said, like, I just want to make a movie with you. Let's sign a deal and let's do something. How long have you been making films before this? Since I'm a kid. Since I'm seven, I've been doing stop motion shorts with uh, my action figure with Star Wars and Playmobil. And, and, and then I just uh, I had a superhero saga when I was a teenager with my friends. With the, uh, it was a, a trilogy. And, um, and it just, I've been doing this stuff since I can't remember. I always, I always shoot at the next thing and then finish and doing another one. That's but even in Uruguay, did you have dreams that this would happen? Probably back in the, in the back of my mind. But it was something that it, it never happened in, in the last hundred years. So it was, you know, if I would have to say it out loud that kind of the goal was to get to work in an industry like this one, uh, people would have got me committed it, it, because it was impossible. It's, I mean, it, even not just from Uruguay, even from a lot of small towns in, in America, it's even something that seems like impossible. And it's definitely not. I mean, Hollywood is an industry that is very, you know, is desperate for talent and is really looking everywhere to try to find it. In the past, they just had the film festivals and had to go to film festival to watch shorts and stuff. Like today, they have YouTube and they do. Or they're watching all the time. Like, believe me, like you put something good in YouTube, you put a short or something, whatever it is that is good that shows you that you can direct and you can tell an interesting story. You, you will get an email, you get a call, you get, I mean, these guys are always watching, right? They're always desperate for new filmmakers, you know? We're not living in times where every Hollywood movie is amazing, no? And so they're really looking for a new generation to come and change that, right? Hey, this is Mike, and we're with uh, Freddy Alvarez, the writer, co-writer, and director of Evil Dead, the, the revamp of the classic 1981 horror film. Are you a fan of horror films? Or? I am, yeah. Well, I'm, you know, like, uh, fan is a strong word, and, and I really respect fans. And so I watch a lot of horror movies, but I think a fan watch everything. And I don't watch everything, but I, I love horror movies, yeah. So when you got the chance to do Evil Dead, I mean, there's a certain responsibility to the fans they have high expectations. Yeah, definitely. What, what uh, I mean, do you feel a certain responsibility when you talk I do, about I do, and I, I, but I'm, 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 I love the originals, and I, I know those films like nobody today, because I, I spent so much time with them, even before making this one, even before meeting Sam Raimi, I was a huge fan, otherwise Sam would have never given me that, that, this film. Like, Sam is so precious of his film that he would have never given it to somebody that doesn't know what it is, or, or that doesn't really, you know, love horror, like, it, it would have never, give it to me. So the reason why he gave it to me is because he knew, I, I knew everything about Evil Dead Universe and, and, I, and I was a, a, a horror lover. You know, I love some, some of my very favorite movies are horror films. So that's why he gave it to me. Otherwise, he would have never did, done that. So uh, what can people expect? Well, how's this different from the original? It's very different. It's very different. It's different characters, right? So that's, uh, uh, that uh, 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 by default will make a different story. Like uh, the stories are all about the characters. So characters are new, you know, the, the, the reason why they go to the cabin is different. We thought uh, if we're going to, you know, tell this story again for 2013, just getting five, you know, guys to a cabin, five friends to a cabin just to have fun, just to smoke pot and, and drink beer. It wouldn't make sense today. Like, you don't, do, you don't need to go to a cabin in the woods to do that. So, so we, we thought we had to tell a more relevant story. And um, that's why this one is about Mia. She's a, she's a heroin junkie. She's trying to, to quit cold turkey, so she decided to lock herself up away from the city, away from everything, and with her loved ones, and, and try to take five days of cold turkey. And, and of course, and their, her friends, they don't, they don't believe she's going to do it. They don't believe she's going to be, she's going to take it. So they kind of plot against her to keep her there by force when she tries to leave. 
And it, while all that drama is, is going on, one of them is going to find a book in the house, which is, of course, something that you shouldn't touch and you shouldn't read from it. And this book is going to leash a curse upon them. And, but of course, it's a beautiful mix between a real story that's happened in the beginning and, and, and slowly you start entering this more supernatural story. And there's, there's never a clear line where one ends and the other begins. So it's a pretty interesting story because you put yourself in this, in the guy's, uh, this, this character's place and it's so hard to understand what you would do there. And so it's, it's a quite complex story in a way. But at the end of the day, it's a classic story of five friends going to the cabin and, and, and getting possessed by demons. Friendship. Yeah, and it's about friendship and love. Friendship and the power of duct tape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Duct tape plays a big part in the movie, I know. Are there, are there any specific rules that are, are there a part of this, the universe that you create in this film? That, that, uh... mm. You know, maybe, probably there was no rules because the only way, uh, these Evil Dead movies, and I like the originals are, and the, this original one, and this new one had to be, there's no boundaries really on where the story can go, right? Um, even for the demon, there's no rule. It seems like it may be, but the demon can do whatever he wants, right? He, he's the devil. He, can, he doesn't really abide by any rules. So kind of the story has that nature to you know, When you think it's going to stop there, it keeps going. When you think, okay, finally, here's the end, it keeps going. And when you think the movie's over, there's still a lot to go, right? You know if you've seen the film. So it, it was, that was kind of a nature. So it's a kind of a no rules kind of thing, right? Like com completely madness and freedom. Awesome, fantastic. So, and you've learned quite a lot in the last few months, just during this last two years. What's what's the biggest lesson you've learned in making? Well, oh, as a filmmaker, I learned so much. It's just like even if you think you know anything about filmmaking, once when you when you do your first film, you learn so much, right? Just by you know by making it and going through the whole process of shooting a movie, you learn so much. But also, uh, you know, about horror in general and 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 how to you know. Work in a horror movie just by working with these guys and with Sam and and, and Rob and, and Bruce uh, just making this film and and I and also you know like a lot of, a lot of things about the Hollywood industry that I thought they were different and and in a good way I think like we're, like like what we're talking about like I always thought they were making sometimes they don't do great movies because they like to make those movies no they don't they just they, those are the best script they have and and it's up I think it's up to our generation to really change that and try and try to create better movies so. I, I learned a lot about that, and, and also, in a great way, I think I managed to to convince an industry that has a hundred years to make a movie in a different way. Like this movie, and this is not just me. This is me and Sam Raimi and Rob Tavern Bruce, like managing to do a completely independent film in in the Hollywood machine, in a way, right? And because that's what Evil Dead is is a completely is an author film. The original Evil Dead was like that. It was just kids. You know, Sam was eighteen when he made that film, so it's like bunch of kids going to the woods trying to shoot the scariest movie ever and Sam wanted to recreate that that's it it's not a it's not just you know it's not a coincidence that he hired me he he, he looked for a, he, he was trying to find a guy that really likes to make movies and and, and who would write the movie and direct it himself and tried to have all the and gave me all the freedom he could to let me shoot the movie I want and and, and that's why I think it'll be a special one so just the whole process was such a big learning curve Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Fetty Alvarez, Evil Dead, April 5th. Check it out. Thank you. Real Black TV. Hey, I'm Fede Alvarez and you're watching Real Black.